What's going on guys? Jay Hoyt back with you. Today, welcome back to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. We're back here on Shoot House. Absolutely frying these guys. I mean absolutely frying. But the last video, well not the last video, second to last video on Christmas absolutely blew up. Talking about the Optic Texas roster changes. What were at the time rumors, speculation, you know, kind of reading into some tweets and stuff kind of implied that some of this stuff was happening, but nothing official came out. So, of course, spending time through the holidays with friends and family, here we are post-Christmas, post the new year, and post some roster changes. So, let's set the scene here. So there's a few teams that actually I think one still has an announcer team and that'd be London. But at the time there was a few teams rumored to be changing. One of them being, well besides Optic, was the Los Angeles Gorilla. So I want to set the story of how we get to the Optic Texas new roster and it starts right here on your screen now. You can see it. That the LA Gorillas tweeted out, we we mutually agreed to part ways with Hook. Throughout the last two seasons, Kyler's uh, impact was always felt on and off the sticks. We're forever grateful uh, for his contribution to our organization and the history he's created with us. Thank you, Hook. Wish you all the best. So, although he was one of the players that was rumored to be dropped from this, you know, new rumored um, starting roster for the LA Gorillas. You figured that he probably wasn't going to go to the bench or to challengers. That some team was going to pick him up. Especially if your submachine guns aren't that great. So this means they basically, I don't know if they terminated his contract or um, released him from his contract. I'm not exactly sure you know, how all that worked. But somehow, some way, they mutually agreed to part ways. So like I said, I don't know if that he got out of his contract or what. Not exactly sure how that works. But then shortly after they, so this was at two o'clock on January third. So this is almost a week ago on what would have been. Let's see, let's say it's Monday. So it's been I don't know last week sometime. The LA Girls tweeted this out: a new look for the new year. This was an hour later, and it says off the uh, new look for the new year. That's what I said. Off the heels of their championship run at Major One Challengers Open, please welcome Assault, Joe Deceives, and Exceed to our starting lineup as they join Arsides. Okay, so that leaves a couple players out, which we'll get to here in a second. But Assault typically is a main AR. Arsides is also a main AR. Joe Deceives basically became a thing this year and this year only. Like, I don't remember him... Even being as a player before, you know, this year, maybe he was in the challenger scene, you know, grinding his way up. Don't really know too much about him. Exceed, one of the players that kind of always seems to be as one of the, the the bigger prospects that has yet to be in a starting spot in the league for a consistent amount of time to show what he's worth. But then somehow always ends up getting dropped, ends up going back to challengers, ends up winning a bunch of stuff, and then it gum, it's a, it's, it's a repeating cycle. So, thoughts on this team real quick? I mean, is this better than their old team? I don't think so. But again, we're one event into the year. I guess we're going to be two events. Well, I guess we're going to be going into our second event of the year. And you can't really just, you know, determine too much yet. But they won, you know, most of the stuff together as a team of three here. Now they add in our cities. Arceus was one of those players that was rumored to be going to Optic, didn't end up working out because of contracts, and here we go. So they tweeted this out, new face, uh, new faces added in with Arceus to the main roster. So okay, although this doesn't really affect what we're going to be talking about, uh, Spart and Neptune both on the starting roster for the LA Gorillas now will be dropped down to their academy roster alongside Diamond Con, and it looks like they signed... Is it noisy? I don't really know who this player even is. Uh, so this player will be joining in. So good for them, I guess. I don't I don't know you know these players super well. I know Spart kind of was like really good for like one event and then kind of wasn't. Neptune kind of same thing. And then Diamond Con, 
you know, he was all right filling in for some teams, but not really like great, great. And Loisy, I literally have no idea who this player is. So interesting roster changes between their starting roster and their um, academy roster as far as, you know, name talent. I don't really see this team doing too much of anything, but we'll see. Obviously, the, the year's still young. We still have, what was it, five, six, seven months in this season. So there we go. This sets the scene for the tweet that happened, of course, when I wasn't home, but with the, you know, uh, the scrim starting and people somehow be able to get into private discords and kind of leaking the team's and leaking who was in a call together, it was going to happen sooner rather than later. So Optic Texas, of course, announced uh, Zio is reunited, which was Hook, Illy, and Shotzi alongside of Skump. Now let's talk about this, right? Hook, as a player, he's been really good. He's won World Championship. He was really big in Halo. Well, actually, he was big in Call of Duty. When the age limit uh, for Call of Duty got implemented, he went over to Halo, did really well, came back to Call of Duty, still did pretty well. When he's on the right team with the right system and he's on the right track, he can be a superstar. But we've also so uh, he's also shown times where if he's not in that role, not in the right groove, he shows to be just another average SMG player. Now here's where the issue comes in. We all know how good Shotzi is. We know how good Skump's doing this year. Illy can be really good. Dashy's no longer here. So they're missing an AR. And Hook is a submachine gun player. So what do you do? Right? The one player that comes to mind is going to be Skump. As we all know, he's always said he wanted to run an AR before he retires. And it looks like he's going to get the opportunity to do that. But here's the problem. He's never ran an AR. I mean, he has, but like not full time. And do I think he's more than capable? Of course. He's always been a more, you know, I don't want to say slower style, you know, submachine gun, but he's always been a more pre-aim heavy submachine gun than a lot of, you know, sub players. So this is where the big risk gets, you know, thrown in here. You now have three traditional submachine gun players and a flex player. So now you have a flex player that needs to go to a main AR. You have Scump who's going to fill in the flex role. And then you have Shotzi and Hoop together. Which is going to be very interesting. Uh, don't get me wrong. Hook's a good player. We know what he's capable of. We know what he's capable of with Rambo, with Illy, with Shotzi. And will that old Dallas Empire lineup when they won the world championship. But is this team going to work? And then on the other hand, if this team works, then great. You made a great signing. On the other hand, if this doesn't go well. And obviously I want to be optimistic, especially since it's a team I support, right? They're up, where are they? Back here. I know it's the one of the older uh, jerseys, which I need to get a new one. Actually, I have a jer I have a sweatshirt and stuff. I probably should be like putting those up instead of you know the old jersey. I'll have to get a jersey, but they're always sold out. See, because thank hex. But like I said, if this lineup does not work, if they don't show up in major two in the major two qualifiers, what do they do? Now this was kind of like a low risk, high reward type of move that you know bring him in he's a free agent i believe and see how it works but on the other hand if you really do need a main ar another ar player i should say where do they go because even if they get another player and they want to keep hook and shotzi and obviously they're gonna keep scump like scump's not going anywhere and it, let's just say they drop Illy, then they're still kind of in the same boat as they are now. Now, maybe it changes a little bit, a little bit of the dynamic of the team, a little bit how they play, but this is a very, a very risky move that either is going to work out great or it's going to work out horribly. Just given that you have three submachine gun players and then a flex player 
two of those players are now playing in roles that they never played in before. And I want to believe, I want to believe that this will work. I want to believe that Hook will come in and, you know, be a superstar again and be a good pair with Shotzi and hopefully, I I'm hoping that, you know, Scump can transition to that flex role and he can absolutely fry and keep putting up great numbers and Illy will do well in the main AR spot. But there's so much risk to this move. But it's official. This is the Optic roster now. You got Shotzi. You got Hook. Both as your submachine guns. You have Scup that's now running a flex role. And now you're going to have Illy running a main AR. And I'd like to say I'm I'm super optimistic. And I'm, and I'm ready for it. But I'm also very nervous that this won't work out. And that it won't be the change that will fix their problems for this year that is my biggest biggest worry of this move now if you were to get hook next year or if they got pred next year when scump's gone okay i you know i'd similar situation like okay i'm happy for it right reunite that trio get a main ar in there that works and boom you got a solid team again but mid-season when you have to win you have to, and not have to, but like it is expected that you do very well this year. Out of all the moves they could have made, was this the best one? I guess we'll have to wait and see. You know, like like I talked with some people, who else are you going to be able to try to get in that spot, right? Because we all know that Optic did try to get um, Pred, or that it was confirmed by Pred himself, that but that didn't work out. They tried to get RCDs. That didn't work out. Hook's the next option here. I guess we'll wait and see. Major 2 starts, what, this week? Right? This weekend, I believe. I think Optic plays on Sunday versus... I don't remember who they play. So I guess we could kind of touch on this real quick. That, let's just say, LA Gorillas, they play... Where do they play? So they play once versus Florida... On Saturday, Optic doesn't play till Sunday at 4.30. And then LA Girls play again. So that'll be an interesting test for them. Florida and LA Thieves probably go 1-1, one one, maybe 0-2. Oh given that LAT just stays strong there. Optic versus Boston. That should be a pretty good matchup. A really good test for them. And we'll have to wait and see. But for now, guys... But that's going to do it for today's video. If you did enjoy, hit that like button down below if you haven't yet. Or if you're brand new here, make sure to subscribe. Turn those post notifications on so you never miss an upload. And don't forget, you can always change your mind later. But with all that being said, guys, we'll see you in the next one.